Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana's channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to continue with the good campaign in the Shadow and Flame mod for Battle for Middle Earth 1 with the Rohan army Eomir and Toriro, here we are gonna conquer Rohan for 20 more command points. Let's get it started. Rohan lies at the center of Middle Earth. These horse lands have long been the site of war and conflict, but its people now seek peace and freedom. Destroy all Isengard forces. Destroy all Isengard forces. Say no more, I got you. So, uh, we have Eomir, he looks dope. The horse lord of Rohan, and we have also a couple of Rohirrim, but we will need to upgrade them to make them strong enough. Because for now, they have no upgrades, they have no heavy armor, they have no forge blades. And I, I'm actually looking forward for the campaign. Oh! For the campaign in, uh, in I'm on hand because you guys were t you know telling me all the time, Shanks, this is gonna be a tough one. You can't do that. And all I can say is challenge accepted. Avoid the pikemen, trample the other units, make them chase us. Let's trample them too. We are just getting some money over time, which is good. Rohan is one of the smallest one v one maps in the game, by the way. And if you don't know, whoever starts here on this spot in a 1v1 match against anybody any against anybody else is gonna be a, in a huge advantage. And we have some peasants here, which is great. Now we can use them to kill the pikemen, actually. That's not bad. Eomir has to be careful. Let's fight them. The pikemen are weak against swordmen, and the peasants are swordmen, if you don't know. It's a 2v1 situation, even though they have no uh, drafts, which means they have no weapons, but they are still, you know, dealing bonus damage to the pikemen. And you can also combine the peasants with your, uh, yeah, the peasants with your horses, but don't ever do that. Trust me on that one. It's gonna be a useless kind of thing, you know. There is a settlement. We need to get as many farms as we possibly can to get as much money as we possibly can, because once again, we will need to build the armory at some point to upgrade all our Rohirrim with heavy armor and forge plates. Okay, let's check the top right side, shall we? We have also bonus symbols, Garrison, the Ruined Tower with Yeoman Archers. I believe we won't be able to do that because I won't be building the Archer range at all. Unless we will get the chance to recruit some Rohirrim Archer Battalions, but I believe that's not gonna be the case anyway in this campaign. So now we're gonna save money. There is another settlement at the bottom or top left side. The peasants are down, which is okay. This Isengard is making a huge mistake by building slaughterhouses because the primary resource building from Isengard is actually um, the furnace. Not only it's gonna be better for Isengard since it's gonna reduce the cost of upgrades, but also it's just much, much tankier than a slaughterhouse. Okay, now we have one, two, three farms outside, which is not bad. There is a goblin there. We can be creeping this one if you want to. Urukai, they, they don't stand a chance. Look how much money we get just because of the outlaw leadership from. Eomir, Lord in Exile, and nearby units earn resources per kill, which is really, really good. In long terms, you will get thousands and thousands of resources collected just because of Eomir being nearby, you know? And this guy has to start making some pikemen because Urukai, they don't stand a chance against the mighty Rohirrim warriors from the Riddermark. Okay, so we have enough money now for the Harmony, we are even cash floating a bit. But it, it should be fine. We have also four power points collected. We can be investing that into the beacon of... Uh, what is that? Beacon of Gondo? Yeah. Surrounding units gain 50% armor. Enemy leadership is negated. So it's not bad at all, actually. But I think we need to go for the 8-8-16 to get the army of the dead unlocked as soon as we possibly can. And that's my advice to you guys. If you are playing the campaign, skirmish or, or multiplayer games, you should always try to reach the AOD, Army of the Dead, with the good factions and the Balrog Summon with the evil factions because these two abilities are game-changing and game-winning. Okay? So we gotta save for the banners. Actually, we don't need banners, right? Because all our Rohirrim, if I'm not mistaken, are level 2. So what we can potentially do in a situation like that is because our Rohirrim, as you can see and tell, are pretty bad damaged. Means that we can now, by the outpost at the bottom left side, build a well for the sustain to heal up our Rohirrim over time. Alright, so... L is the shortcut for the well. 
Let's build double well for the double sustain so we can heal up a bit faster. He was just using the vision of Palanti if you are wondering what the sound was. Oh, hit him! So let's buy all the upgrades because we will have the money very, very soon. Right, uh, like mentioned before, we have four farms outside, which is really, really nice. Because we have also five farms um, inside our camp. So in total, we have nine farms in total. Sorry, ten farms in total, which means we have the full value of the food bonus. 30% discount on our calf units. But also, we are getting decent amount of cash over time. And once again... The second the armory is fully finished, the second we purchase all the upgrades from our armory, the first thing that we need to do is demolish our armory to make a spot in our camp. Because this is gonna be completely waste if you keep the armory. You don't need to keep it in order to be able to upgrade your units with heavy armor, forge blades or the banner carrier. So please keep that in mind. Uh, don't waste a slot. Because unlike in BFME 2 or in Rise of the Witch King, you have not unlimited slots. You can't build everywhere. That's not possible. You have always limited slots in BFME 1. Just keep an eye on the armory. The second we hear that banner. The new upgrade is ready. The new upgrade is ready. Demolish it. We have over 2,500, which is really good. And let's build now the stable. Build also towers just to feel safe. And give those guys some weapons to fight with. Forge Blades is a bit more expensive, 350. Heavy Armor is cheap on Rohan. On Gondo, it's always the same. Like, everything costs the same. Rohan has different prices. So, Heavy Armor is three, 250, 350, 300. But Gondo has always the same price, besides the Night Chill upgrade, which is gonna be a bit cheaper. But Forge Blades, Banner, and Heavy Armor for the Gondo Knights is gonna be always the same price, guys. Please keep that in mind. The Batch Formation is gonna make our units also deal 25% more damage. I would recommend you guys to use that when you know there is not a counter damage, when you are going for a big trample, for example, against archers, or when you want to destroy the enemy buildings, farms, or whatsoever. That, that you know, this way you can kill the farms and any structure really a bit faster. Alright, he's even combining units, man. That's very new. I've not seen evil factions do that in normal BFME 1. The stable. Oh, yeah, we are able to recruit the Rohirrim Archer Battalion. Oh, okay. Actually, not not bad in this case. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna build, uh, we're gonna demolish one of the farms and build the archer range, because if you, if you want to be able to get the fire arrow, not the fire arrow, but you know the other uh, upgrade on the archers or here the archers, because fire arrow once again doesn't exist in this mod, uh, which is kind of okay, I guess, because it's gonna limit the damage output from the archers against buildings. In this way, you are forced to make different kind of uh, different type of units if you want to be able to win the game. Because in BFME one, you know, one type of unit would be able to win you the game. So you know what we need to do now? We need to send those Rohirrim archers to die because we will run out of command points. We have only 150 command points available. And uh, the fletching, Elven fletching, is uh, is needed, and uh, we can just get it when we have the archer range level two. And because of the reason that we were just building the archer range, we will also be able to uh, get the bonus garrison the ruined tower with human archers. Be on guard. Okay, yes, finally some pikemen. It's all it's needed. We lost this farm, but it's fine. We have so much money right now. We should not have any money problems in long terms. Because the second the farms are turning level two or level three, they're gonna even give us more money, which is really nice. And also, horse shield upgrade can be purchased once the armory, uh, once the stable, sorry, is level two. We will need three archers in order to get our building to level two. Just, just lose them. Run into the pikemen. Okay. I like to make, uh, I like to make a mix of Rohirrim and Rohirrim archers, but because this mod is offering you even a, uh, even a uh, elite unit, elite horsemen, those royal vanguards, vanguards, uh, I want to get them on the field as well. Just to see how they look like, you know? We need a bit more. Oh, never mind. We got it to level 2, which is great. Horseman shield is a bit expensive. Okay, we put them inside the jeans. To get the bonus. Now all the bonuses are accomplished. Men of Rohan. Just run them down. Horse shield upgrade. We can give them to our Rohirrim to make them a bit tankier. Or shield upgrade is going to make them tanky against pierce damage, which means, for example, against arrows uh, from the towers, but also from the archers. They're going to be almost immune to damage because it is able to stack with the heavy armor. So you have heavy armor plus this, you are going to be quite tanky. Trust me on that one. 
Okay, so level two. We need to wait a little bit now until we get the money for the Alvin Fletching. Just a couple of seconds needed. There we go. You wanna fight? You wanna... Okay, you win. <laughs> look there. Look the picture from them. They have also this skirmish formation. They lose a lot of armor, but they only gain 25% damage. Once again, you need to make sure to use this kind of battle formation in the right time, you know, in the right situation. You wanna fight me? I'm done fighting. No problemo. Look the trample now, guys. Let's switch to the veg, veg formation. Let us hunt some Uruks, in this case, you may not Orcs. And Fiesta. Beautiful, juicy trample, and we get so much money for killing this because... Of the Lord and uh, Lord in Exile from Eomir. We must defend our country. Okay, this one is purchased. That's great. Now we can demolish this also because we won't be recruiting any more Roman archers. Let's get some Rohirrim archers on the field, shall we? In order to recruit this units, you need to get the stable to level three first. So that's gonna still take some time. Let us hunt some orcs. Let us hunt some orcs. I'm actually that's tempted right. to lose them. Uh, let's send two of them to die. You know. Swiftly. I want to run into the pikemen to show you guys that you can't be as strong as you need in order to fight or trample down the pikemen. Unless you have theory nearby and he's using the, he is using the glorious charge, even then it's like a suicide mission if you trample into the pikemen. So where are the pikemen at? There are some pikemen, let's fight them. You see? You see how they are dying even with full upgrades, guys? Pikemen are just the best counter. I mean, not really the best counter. The best counter would be... Seriously, um, what is that for Death and Glory? 25% movement speed, 10% health. Uh, the best counter is a flyer, like for example, a Nazgul, the Witch King, normally, even though the Witch King here in this mod isn't able to fly yeah. on the Fell Beast. But you know what I'm trying to say. Get all the upgrades on this uh, Rohirrim Archers. The Wedge Formation is can always be uh, used on this one. Because you will always keep your distance with this unit. And once you are level 2, you are able to, for a short period of time to use the Flaming Arrow Volley. Which can be nice not only against structures, but also against the ants, for example. Because ants are very vulnerable against fire, as you guys know. We gotta get one more of them on the field. That's gonna get the stable to level 3. And that's going to give us the chance to recruit the special and the elite horsemen from Rohan from the Riddermark. The Royal Vanguard. They are also very expensive. Look the price difference between them and these units. But I'm assuming because these units are special, first of all, you are only limited to have three of these units on the field at once. That's the first thing. And second thing is, I believe you can't upgrade them with weapons. They're gonna be like a mini hero from BFME to the Rise of the Witch King. Wedge formation. And I like the fact that you get a bonus from level two. Besides dealing a bit more damage and becoming a bit more tanky, now every unit can also have like a special ability to use. Horses, they have the chance to use the for death and glory. And depending on the unit that you have, you can actually use different kind of stuff. Okay, we have all the upgrades on our units, which is pretty amazing. And actually, we need one more, really. We can fight. I want to I wanna take a look into the damage output from this Rohirrim Arches now. Let us hunt. Oh, he has no pikemen here. Are you out of your mind? Rohirrim. You can also trample with the Rohirrim Arches, which is not uh, the best choice in many situations, but it can be great in some situations. Especially if you want to trample down the Arches or something, because when you right-click, they're going to auto automatically shoot from a safe distance, but the damage output from a trample against some sort of units is just insane, you know? So, how many command points do they cost? 15 only? I'm down, dude, I'm down. 15 only, just like the normal Rohirrim. And Rohirrim Archer Battalion. So we have now in total four Rohirrim Archer. Maybe it's a little bit too much, but it's okay. We are just preparing for the for the Helm's Deep, you know? And for Minas Tirith, guys. Spoiler alert, because, uh, you know, Rohan is gonna help out. Uh, Rohan is the MVP in the films, let's be honest. Yeah, once again, you are not able... Yeah, you are not able to give them anything but banner. They have also the... Oathbound, uh, temporarily gain 15% movement speed and 25% armor. And you have also leadership to the king leadership bonus to king guards troops while near king Theodine. So it's only possible when the king is nearby. 15% more damage and 15% more armor. But these are the special units, I take it. We are command points kept. I believe it's time to finish our opponent. One of them is enough. Follow my lead. Follow my lead. 
I'm not sure. I would like to test this. This unit against full upgraded Rohirrim. I mean, I believe Rohirrim can still win because upgrades in BFME 1 are so effective. Trust me. So we gotta kill the pikemen with our Rohirrim archers. Very, very important. Look, the they are like using the Silverton arrows from BFME to the Rise of the Witch King, you know? You gotta kill the pikemen with the units. Just stay nearby with Eomir to give them leadership to make them stronger. Let us hunt some orcs. And you also need to kill these pikemen, please. Uh, here's one furnace level 3. But no problemo. We can also use the heal for the worst case scenario. Eomir is all about to hit level 4. Level 5 is gonna unlock his leadership, which is gonna boost his damage, which is something I really like a lot. That also Eomir is now able to fight in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Eomir, until now, was always like a sportive hero in the game, you know? This doesn't give us damage boost. No, it doesn't give us damage boost. I wanna see the damage though from the fire. Oh, look at this fire damage. Holy guacamole. Alright, I take it. Look at this. Rohira marches, they were always busted, and they are still busted. But once the fire is gone, look at the damage against buildings. Even with the album fletching, it deals almost no damage, guys. Anyways, GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to be subscribed to the channel. Leave a like on this video as well. And if you are looking for more content like this, please make sure to visit also our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash beyondstandards. The link is going to be in the description down below. I would love to meet you in the upcoming live stream as we are victorious in this beautiful game. And uh, Rohirrim Battalion killed 89 units and 156 in total, which is the MVP of our army. Eomir was able to kill 17. But once again, Eomir is more like a sportive hero to give constant leadership to the nearby allied units. 20 more command points, which is dope. And it looks like we are, ladies and gentlemen, Amon Hand is coming up next. And you guys told me I can't do that, but you will get the chance to see tomorrow how to do that easily <laughs> i hope at least i don't know i've never i've not tried this mission yet in the shadow and flame mod and if you don't want to miss this video tomorrow please make sure to be subscribed to the channel thank you guys so much for watching i will see you next time until then take care of yourselves and as always stay beyond standards and keep hitting like a truck peace and see you tomorrow